in the second session of TEDx, a session where we're saving the best for last, and I'm going first. <laughs> I'm here to talk today about innovation. Innovation is a very funny thing for two reasons. Number one, you never know when an innovative idea will strike, and number two, it's often a funny reason you come up with it in the first place. I should probably get my clicker. For me, the funny time and place was to sitting under a tree in West Virginia. I thought to myself, you know what, I should build a motorcycle. And the funny reason was, as a physicist, I needed a way to impress girls. <laughs> well, this may not have been the most noble of reasons being working on electric vehicles. I've certainly enjoyed the ride. We see the effects of our current energy strategy everywhere we look. Rising prices of gasoline and electricity, increasing uh, instability in long-term energy markets, it's more enough to make anyone nervous. However, if we look at how far we've come, cheap, or cheap energy from combustion and heat engines has driven human innovation faster than any other rate in human history. We've learned more in the past 100 years than we have really at any point. I have no doubt whatsoever that we can advance past this. We can innovate and go on to next technologies, which is what makes electric vehicles so exciting for me, is they can be charged by any method that can generate electricity instead of just something non-renewable like gasoline. I've always been a little bit different from, uh, from my younger years. Um, I always enjoyed building things. I started with Legos and really never quite stopped. Um, you can see here is a robot I built, um, but things progressed past robots pretty quickly. Um, for some reason, my parents, I thought they should be concerned about what I was building. However, they never quite were, um, even though I kept giving them more and more reason to be concerned um, <laughs> and continuing to give them reason to be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, what I realized was that, you know what, I really wanted to build a motorcycle. So when I saw on Craigslist there was this bike, a 1978 Suzuki GS550 for $50, um, I figured like this was the next step. This was going to be a lot of fun. There was a problem, though. I had to use some innovation because I knew that my mom was never going to let me buy a motorcycle. <laughs> so what I had to do was I had to come up with some way to ask her that was so outlandish and so ridiculous that she couldn't possibly say no or that she'd just laugh it off and assume it wasn't a serious question. Fortunately, she did laugh and I took that as permission. So here I was. I bought this motorcycle on, uh, on Craigslist and I got it over to the physics building. And my first problem was that um, I was outside, upstairs, and that my lab was going to build it and was in the basement. So if there's one take-home message from this talk I'm going to give to you, it's that bodybuilders create innovation. So I called up my two bodybuilder friends, and they fortunately got my motorcycle into the basement. Um, so that was, that was really exciting. So um, anyway, back to, uh, back to my mom for a minute. Um, like I said, she was, thank you, mom. Um, <laughs> she, like I said, she was quite concerned. Um, and you know, I'd always been a, a pillar of proper moral judgment. So I can't imagine, once again, why she was concerned. But like I said, I progressed with the, uh, the build. And um, what happened was that you get it down there, and you realize that you've got to start working on it. So you just, you're just you just taken by your sense of um, irrational sense of overconfidence, and you start taking things apart, taking measurements. But soon you come up with the realization that <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing at all. And this is the very important part of innovation, because that's what happens. You try something. It doesn't work. You get your ego level time and time again. But then, you know, it's, it's like, back to my motorcycle, um, you just keep pushing forward and figuring out things. I remember late nights, I'd come home from the physics lab at, you know, past midnight, walk home and uh, go into my apartment. My roommates would ask me, you know, what'd you get done on the bike tonight? And I was like, you know, I just kind of sat in my thinking stool the whole time and just looked at it. And they thought I was making no progress and I couldn't disagree. But something very important was happening. And I've got a, uh, an example for this. So to me, knowledge is, it's like a puzzle, a puzzle box with no lid to it. What happens when you look at it, you know that all these disciplines, they all fit together some way, shape, or form. But you look at individual pieces of the puzzle, you think to yourself, there's no way these things fit together. But once you start putting pieces of the puzzle together, the whole picture, the all of knowledge becomes more intuitive, and it comes together faster. The same thing happened to my motorcycle. It was very slow to no progress in the beginning. I'd be breaking expensive parts and just kind of bumbling all over the place. But I kept pushing forward with it, and slowly the pieces started coming together. And it actually came together very rapidly then, just like a puzzle when you're down to a few pieces. So, oh, dang it. Transition too soon. Um, the point is the bike did come together, and I had a lot of fun with it occasionally. Too much fun, as you may see here. So, but don't let me exaggerate. It was only my tail light out. And if anyone saw the original wiring on the original bike, you could see why that might have happened. So um, what I also talk about is innovation. Um, innovation, it doesn't happen in a montage. It's a very long, drawn out, slow process, sometimes very painful. Um, for example, me, um, two, three years ago, I was terrified of public speaking. Now I'm still terrified of public speaking. I'm just kind of used to it. So <laughs> I guess I'm just, I've, I've come to grips with it. Um, on top of that, another thing I talk about with innovation is that um, when I was a freshman, I was doing physics research. And my professor, what he told me was that, Tony, when you graduate from physics as an undergrad, it'll be the smartest in physics you'll ever be. After that, you just forget and specialize. So with human knowledge being where it is, how can we possibly hope to you know, push the envelope from where we are right now if you just have to specialize after you, you learn all this? And 
to me, the only way to do this is communication between people and between fields. Um, there's a phrase I really like. It's about team building. There are three things in team building that's very important. Motivation, ability, and fit. You know, ability can be taught, motivation can be encouraged, but fit either you do or you don't. Fit gets you through the tough times, makes the good times better, the bad times livable, and you have plenty of all three when you're pushing limits of what's possible. So, on that note, I tell you that, you know, the situation we live in in this day and age is more complicated than ever. All the systems that come together, it requires a lot of innovation, but it requires a lot of communication between fields. And we're currently at the place where we've, we've got so much compiled knowledge between these fields that innovation is the way that we're going to move forward and we're going to thrive. And with that, thank you very much.